Okay, here we are with the homework solutions for assignment 3.04, number 1. That's questions 1, 2, and 3 from section 7.5 in the textbook. So this logarithmic graph shows the changes in the decibel level y as a function of the relative sound intensity x. So we want to use the following characteristics to describe the curve and explain why it's logarithmic. So the location of any intercepts. We do have one intercept at x equals 1. There is no y-intercept. The end behavior is that the y does go to positive infinity as, as x goes to positive infinity, but it goes to negative infinity as x goes to 0. Now, the domain is x greater than 0, not even equal to, never negative, and the range is all real numbers. And finally, the function is increasing. So all of this is consistent with the characteristics of a logarithmic function. So for part B, by what factor does the relative sound intensity change when the decibel level increases by 10? So if, as we're going through this, we see as the decibel level increases, say from 2 to 4, now that's not super clear, but as it goes, say, from 1 to 10, then the, decib the relative sound intensity goes from 1 to 10. As it goes in others, it's a little hard to see because of the taper of the curve here and how much they've, they've shown you. We could reconstruct this curve in Desmos, but every time... Or by what factor does it change when the decibel level increases by 10? The relative sound intensity will actually increase by quite a bit more than that. It'll go up by 100 as we're going through. When the relative sound intensity is doubled, you go from 1 to 2, how does the decibel level change? So maybe going from 2 to 3 is more obvious. So a sound intensity of 2 has a decibel level of 3. A sound intensity of 4 has a decibel level of 6. So that's doubled. If we go to 8, then the decibel level is up to 9. So it's not a li linear scale. It is that logarithmic scale. For question 2, we need to determine the equation of the logarithmic regression function that models the given data and describe the following characteristics of the graph. So for that, we need to start entering everything into the calculator or into a spreadsheet in order to get this data. I will do that quickly. So you can enter things really quickly when you can pause the recording, but I have entered all of our data and I'm going to insert a chart. And we're going to use this chart to figure out. Okay, that doesn't seem to want to insert the chart today. But we're going to use this chart to determine a logarithmic fit. Oh, there we go, it's finally come up. So we are again going to add a trend line. This time it's a logarithmic trend line and the label we use the equation. So there we go, negative 6.65 plus 108 times the natural log of x because this will only do the natural log and not log of base 10 when you're doing it with the spreadsheet fit. So then the location of any intercepts that we have it doesn't quite show on the graph here, but y equals 0 when 108 log x equals 6.65. So if we were to actually take this same information, once we have our fitted equation, we can graph that fitted equation in decimals, negative 6.65, plus 108 times the natural log of x. 
And yeah, we really need to change the zoom to see everything. But we do have a y-intercept of about 1.064. So we do have that piece here. If we want to see the end behavior, it's a little tricky to see right now. Uh, but if we take a look at our data range, our highest X is 21. Our highest Y is 325. So if we keep, say, X from negative uh, 2 to 21, and our y we go negative 40 up to 325. Now we have more of a curve where we can see that end behavior. And that is more consistent with the data that we were provided. So with those limits in place, we have a much more reasonable look at the curve. The end behavior as x goes to 0, it goes to negative infinity. As x goes to positive infinity, the y goes to positive infinity. The domain and range, again, x is strictly positive, y is all real numbers. And whether the function is increasing or decreasing, it is increasing. So we have another logarithmic fit here. That's question two. For question three, it's the same idea. But this time we are dealing with years since 1900 and the population of Alberta. So it asks us to create a scatter plot and find the logarithmic regression, as well as interpolating the year in which the population exceeded 2 million. Again, interpolate rather than extrapolate is put data in the middle. So again, a quick pause while I enter this data. So we can see that the data has now been entered. So we can go back to that spreadsheet and again, insert a chart. And again, we need it to be a scatter plot so that we can fit it with a logarithmic equation. This doesn't seem to be easily fitting a logarithmic function though. Some of that is because we are getting actually exponential growth. So it's logarithmic and exponentials. So we can now use this, labeling it with our equation to figure out exactly what's going on. And we can predict from this graph that it's gonna hit 200 or it passed that 2 million right around that 81 year mark. So here's our scatter plot. We use this to find that it's actually, here it's exponential. The reason we had to go to exponential is because this only does log base E and didn't allow for negative exponents. We should have been able to do this with a negative base log. Um, we could also do it with a log function by swapping our x and y. If we swap our x and y, right, and then we can do a logarithmic trend line. But for some reason, this is still showing. Ah, that's why. We'll remove that one. So that we can get a slightly better fit to that logarithmic function. But it's, it's still not perfect because of the data that we have here. But then that 2 million person mark is right around that 75 year mark. So we have that negative 346 plus the natural log of 29. So or 346 plus 29 times the natural log, I should say. And that has to be with very different y-axes. So y from 0 to 125 and x from 0 to 3 million. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 
and then the y just goes to 125. So then our x equals 2 million hits at about 75 years. So 1975 was right around the time that we hit that mark we were looking for. And then our final, or well, that's the interpolation. Now the rest of the end behavior we've got once we have the logarithm this way. So that is how we solve questions 1, 2, and 3.